Join the song of adoration. Join the symphony of praise. Bring to God your gifts for harvest. Bring the fruit of all your days. So we stand to sing our first hymn. Number I can't see. And I believe it is the third. Two seven five. Two seven five. Please stand. <laughs>
Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We sit or kneel for our confession. <coughs> so we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and all. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand if you are able to sing the glory. <coughs> The New Testament reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, beginning to read at the first verse. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, 
If any comfort from his love, if any common sharer in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfil his good purpose. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. <clears throat> Stand if you are able to sing a gradual hymn, hymn number 380, at the name of Jesus. <clears throat>
according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. <clears throat> the father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. a 
and is unique among the world's religions. That humility commanded by Jesus is what draws us into himself and then into union with God the Father. Coming back to our hymn, the end of verse 1 and the beginning of verse 2, Jesus, who from the beginning was the mighty word, at his voice creation sprang at once to sight. All the angel faces, all the hosts of light, thrones and dominations, stars upon their way, all the heavenly orders in their great array including that little rock that they've just spent seven years getting a little bit of dust from to bring back to earth. In Genesis 1, the story of creation, you find a great piece of poetic prose. And I have to say, I like the King James Version for this. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and it was so. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind on the earth, and it was so. Everything that grows from the soil is our harvest. The apples that we eat, the bananas that we peel, the cabbages we steam, and the potatoes that we roast. This is part of God's harvest for us. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and days and years, and it was so. Remember, stars upon their way, all the heavenly orders, and time itself. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. And God saw that it was good, and so we have the harvest of the sea, the sky through God's command, his word. And then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and beast of the earth. And God saw that it was good. So we have the harvest of the farmer's creatures as God goes on to create humanity and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth. to the beginning of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is God's Word made flesh, and we who are flesh are through Jesus also children of God. But wherever and whenever we are given dominion and authority, we also have responsibility. And that's true of our planet, our environment, and our food. The world has enough for everyone's need, but not for their greed. There is an awful paradox in our world between obesity or gluttony and starvation. The world has enough for everyone's need, but not for their greed. A paradox between the £100 tasting menu at the local Michelin star restaurant and the opening of another food bank just down the road. The world has enough for everyone's need, but not for their greed. When surplus food is stored in great barns or vast refrigerated units and sold a great profit in leaner times, the poor cannot afford 
afford even the basics. The world has enough for everyone's need, but not their greed. Jesus spoke often using examples from farming and harvesting in his teaching, and we find one in our gospel. Family members were expected to help with the care of vines, sheep, wheat fields, and everyone would have expected no less. So any failure in doing so would bring nodding heads as the listeners related to his words in their own experience. And Jesus also spoke of responsibility to our family, our neighbours, and anyone who is in need. And he was also challenged about his authority to teach or speak as he did here. And his answer is often the case, was to turn the question around or pose a different question that would make the questioner face the answer from within their own knowledge, even if it was uncomfortable. Good Samaritan is one famous example. A lawyer smugly asking, who is my neighbour? Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan and finishes, who was the neighbour to the injured man? And that fancy pants lawyer couldn't even bring himself to say the name Samaritan. Instead he said, the one who helped him. So Jesus rubbed it in by saying, go and be like that. But here, the question of authority is a trap. If Jesus says his authority comes from God, he'd be guilty of blasphemy. So he turns the question of divine authority onto the person of John the Baptist. And they can't answer without looking silly. So they plead ignorance. We all know that in law, ignorance is no excuse. In our own lives, we are commanded to be like Jesus, humble, obedient to the will of God. As children of a generous God, we need to stop chasing after more and more stuff. And be content with what we have. And give thanks to God for all the good gifts that surround us. And to finish on a lighter note, we're going to sing a little song. Jesus said that unless we learn to see things as children do, we shall not enter the kingdom of God. If you listen to young children at nursery or infant school, you will sooner or later hear one of them say, that's not fair. You probably get it from two-year-olds occasionally. They may not understand all the fancy concepts about law and order and justice and so on, but they know when something's not fair. They have an innate sense of one of the key elements of God's kingdom. If it's not fair, it's wrong. So we're going to sing the cauliflower song. Now it's quite short. I have been singing along with YouTube for three solid days, trying to make sure that I get it right. You should have the words on small pieces of paper. It's called, it starts with the line, cauliflower's fluffy and cabbage is green. I hope you've got that. Uh, I'm going to ask Elizabeth to play through a, core, a verse and a chorus, just through once to get the idea. It swings very nicely and the words do fit the music. So this will give you time to play that.
given us, you have given us to share. Help us to enjoy and be grateful for everything. Amen. Amen.
of and help those in our community who do not have the means to feed their families or themselves and rely on food banks, food stocks and other organisations. We ask that you bless those who work to bring meals and food to the poor and infirm, not just here, but throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are hungry and undernourished, for those whose health is damaged by the lack of food, for those with eating disorders, severe allergies and illnesses which mean they cannot eat or digest their food. For a moment, let us pray silently for those known only to us, those who are suffering, that they may know your grace and to be filled with your love.
place where you are going to be. The table of the bread and is now ready. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you